Welcome to part 5 of the Atomic Audio Visuals in Unity tutorial by Peerplay. In this final part we will apply the post-processing to the scene and add some positional animation to the atoms. Let's start first by fixing the post-processing so everything looks a little bit more cool. If you haven't already imported the post-processing stack into your project, then go to the Asset Store and find the post-processing stack and import that into your project. Now this post-processing stack works really easy, so just go over to your main camera and add a new component and add the post-processing behavior. Now this behavior needs a profile, so we need to add a new profile. So let's right click here, create and go over to post-processing profile. I'll just uh, press enter and we've got a new profile here. Go to your main camera, drag and drop this into your profile. Now go over to the profile we created and here we can select what we want to use in our processing. So let's turn off the VOG and we do want to use Bloom. And I've already set up some uh, values. Here's the intensity at 0 0.3, threshold gamma to 1, soft knee to 1 and radius to 7. The anti-flicker is turned on and I've used the texture of a lens dirt. Uh, and I put the intensity to 2. So with that in place, if we play then we should see some bloom. If we turn this off, you can see the differences uh, of the bloom with or without. And with the post processing in place, we'll start creating our animation. So let's go to the atomic attraction inside the preset and let's open up this script. Now we're going to create a little system which is an animation between a start point and an end point. Uh, and we can move the atoms uh, between these points based on the incoming values of the audio. So let's scroll a little bit down and just above the on draw gizmos, let's create here a public boolean and we'll call this the animate pos. So we can tick it on or off whether we want to use the animation on this one or not. Now we need a start point and an end point. So I'll create a private vector 3 and we'll call this the start point. And we also need a destination, and for that I will create a public uh, vector3, and we'll call this the destination. So we can uh, change the destination value inside the editor uh, to the position where we want it to be. Now to have some control in the way we want to animate this between the start point and the end point, we'll create an animation curve. So let's create a public animation curve and we'll just call this animation curve. The next thing we need is to create some kind of a timer uh, to track on which position the atom should be on the timeline of the animation curve. So we'll create here a new float and we'll call this the anim timer. So for just a moment I want to show you how the animation curve works. If we go into the curve window, I've already created a curve so the timer will go from 0 to 1, but at the point that the timer will be, it will read the destination value of which this line corresponds to. So if the timer is at 0 0.5, then it will be at 1, and 1 will be the exact destination of the value that we put inside this vector 3. So it will go to the destination, and then it will go back to where it started. So it will loop in between of the destination and the start point. And if you want to specify this point at exactly the right uh, position, you can do edit key, change the value here and you get the exact point because it's sometimes really hard to put your point at the correct position. So just put edit key, change the value to 1, change the time to 0 0.5 and we've got the exact position. Now for our animation we need three more different variables and the first one that we need is to specify at which speed we want to have the animation go. So let's put in here a public float and we'll call this the anim speed. Now we also want to specify on which audio band it should go um, so let's specify here a public integer and we'll call this the boss animation band 
And the last thing that we need is to specify whether we want to use the buffered values of the audio pair or the unbuffered values. So let's create here a public boolean and we'll call this the pause anim buffered. Now before we start to create our update script of the animation we want to make it visible to see where our destination value is and we'll do this inside the onDraw gizmos because that really helps us to create a composition of our visualization. So outside of this for loop we'll put an enter here and we'll specify a new gizmos color. So let's type gizmos color is going to be a new color and let's just make this color white. So we'll draw a white line and the start point should be the vector 3 uh, start point which is going to be the transform dot its position and we also need an endpoint so we'll type in here in vector 3 endpoint and the endpoint is going to be the transform dot position uh, plus the destination that we've specified. So let's type in here the destination. And we can now draw a line here. So let's type in gizmos.draw line. And here we have to specify the start point and the end point, which is the start point that we've called and the end point. Now let's save the script. Now here if we change the destination to another point then you can see a line drawn which is very helpful in the editor. So you can see exactly where it's going. Now back in our script we need to add one line into the start function and that is to set the start point position at the start. So let's say here that the start point is going to be its transform dot position. And now that we've set up our start function, we can set up our update function of the animation. So let's go in between atom behavior and select audio values. And we'll call here a new void and we'll call this animate position. And let's add this one to the update as well. So animate position. Now inside the animate position we first want to call if the boolean animate pause has been checked. If uh, animate pause then do the rest. Now we've created an animation timer value and we want to increase that value based on whether we have used the buffered values or the non-buffered values. So we'll create another if statement inside the if statement of if we use the animate pause. So let's say here if um, our boolean of pause animation buffered has been checked, then we want to do something. And um, after that, if we haven't checked it, then we want to do something else. Now, what do we want to do here uh, is that we want to set our animation timer. going to be plus is uh, time dot delta time times the audio peer uh, and we want to use here the audio band buffer and which buffer do we want we want to specify here the plus and in band that we will fill in in the editor and we'll multiply this by the anim speed Now we can copy paste this and put this inside the else function and the only thing we have to change here is instead of using the buffer we're using the value without the buffer. Now if the animation value is above 1 we want to reset it to its position at 0. So what we can do here is in if statement if the anim timer is above or equal to 1 then we want to set the anim timer to minus is 1f 
Now we don't want to use the NM timer value, but we want to use the value of the evaluation of our animation curve that we've set up. So I will call this the alpha time, and that is going to be the animation curve dot evaluate. And we want to evaluate its time of the anim timer. Now we still require the endpoint, so we can say here that a new factor tree is going to be called the endpoint, which is going to be just as we did in the on draw gizmos, is going to be the destination uh, plus its start point. And now we can set the transform dot its position to a vector three dot lerp and we want to lerp between the start point and the end point and it's going to have the alpha time input this was everything there is to this script but somehow unity gave me an error in the first frame where it said that audio period audio band buffer is not a number so I'm going to do a little check against this number if it is a number and it should only be applied if it's a number. So we can do this by an if statement with an exclamation mark system.single if it's nan, if it's not a number. So we'll check against the audio period of audio band buffer and then I want to um, run this and if it's not a number then it shouldn't be run. And the same thing we can do at here with the um, audio band without the buffer. And now that we're done with scripting, we can save the script and go back to Unity, where we can see all these values. Make sure that animate pause is checked on, and we can specify here a destination value for this one to go. The animation speed on which it runs, let's set it to 0.5 for now and the animation band this is to the deep bass and this is using no buffer now i can copy paste this place it somewhere else set the destination to um downwards and we can set this to for example four and let's make it buffered and if we run the uh, project now we can see that this one is moving towards there and this one is moving towards there and back as you can see it's working um, it's not very fancy but we can set up a scene where uh, we can specify a lot of different of these things now with this animation and all the other presets in the Atomic Audio Visualization, you can create some pretty cool compositions with this. And if you're a patron on Patreon, then you can download this entire project uh, with these five presets included. So here's one that's going down, another one going up. Or we could uh, go to another one where we've got a different composition. And you can create some pretty cool things here. Now this comes to the end of the Atomic Audio Visuals tutorial. I hope you learned something new and you got inspired for making some cool visualizations yourself. I'm always happy to read comments on my videos. And as I said earlier, you can become a patron on Patreon to support me in creating these. Thank you for watching and see you next time.